All right, everybody. I'm back. Uh, Jim Ducer here with Business 146. Hey, I apologize in advance. This week's been a little bit of a mess. I um, Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to get through this week. I'm going to fire Cheryl Sandberg, the ex-COO uh, of uh, uh, Facebook. She said, at the end of every week, you should fire your per you, you should fire yourself from the week before. So I'm going to get through this week. I'm going to fire the the, the instructor I have been because I deserve it to be fired. But we're gonna we're gonna power through this week um, through this these slides for chapter two, and then on Friday I will put up a quiz for you, and you just have you can do that over the weekend. It's um, uh, open note, open book, um, and then uh, and I take take that. There will be a time element on that, but you can open up whenever you want, and then. Um, and then if you could just get back to me with just a few things that that you did learn from from this week. And I will also add some um, get more in get more kind of in the weeds and give you some more details about some of the stuff we're going to go over today including, uh, for this uh, slideshow. All right, today we're going to talk about income statements, balance sheets and budgets. This is chapter two. Um, balance sheets and income statements, kind of what are they? Um, this is in chapter two of your of your uh, of your textbook. First of all, let's go into balance sheets. Balance sheets, that's basically just a financial statement that describes a person's um, financial position at any given time. It's like it says right here in the slides, a snapshot that can be taken at any time for any individual or any company. You can do a balance sheet for you right now. You can do, and it can tell you kind of um, where you are um, from a financial standpoint. You can do a balance sheet for you um, in 10 years. And it'll tell you exactly how you're doing at that moment. So it's, a balance sheet is basically, a moment in time, any moment in time where you are um, financially and, and fiscally. Whereas an income statement that basically measures financial performance over a given period of time. That's common in uh, in the business world. Like if you want to have an uh, income statement, there's usually for a, a certain period of time. There's um, for, um, you have an income statement rarely, for like a month, you, you have an income statement for a quarter or three months, or you have an income statement for, you know, a year. And that's basically kind of gives you a uh, more detailed, um, uh, more de details about the financial performance over a given period of time. So income, so balance sheet is just um, a snapshot of where somebody is at that moment in time. Income statement basically summarizes a specific period of time. The components of a balance sheet. There's three main components of a balance sheet. There's your assets, your your liabilities and then your net worth. And I'll give you some examples um, this weekend that you can just watch next week uh, to um, figure out um, the balance sheet and all these three components. Let's get into assets. What exactly are assets? Assets are just are things that you own, what you own. It could be cash, that can be check, checking, savings, uh, CDs, money markets, um, yeah, it could be a lot more things. These are just, these are just mainly the, the liquid assets that, that you would have. Remember, we talked about liquidity in the last class, which liquidity is um, something that you can turn into cash. You can turn into cash pretty quick. Um, what are your, liabil your liabilities? Liabilities are debt. That's what you owe. So assets, what you own. Liabilities, what you own, what you owe. So own versus owe. Uh, so your, your liabilities are, are your debt is what you owe and there's uh can be broken down into different categories long term which is mortgage student loans auto loans basically anything for the most part has a fixed payment for for fixed terms meaning if you have a car loan where you pay 320 dollars a month for 60 months or if you have a mortgage where you pay 2300 dollars a month for 30 months um, or a student loan where you pay whatever that is for a certain period of time. So that's a long-term liability or long-term debt. Current, basically anything that is current is, is generally considered anything that, that is under a year. Um, utilities, rent, insurance, credit cards, et cetera. So, so long-term is uh, debt, long-term debt is generally more than a year. Current is less than a year because you can do a lot. You can make changes with um, with with your liabilities, uh, the current liabilities by how you pay them off. Um, your net worth. That's easy. It's basically the difference between your assets and liabilities. You mass you subtract your liabilities from your assets, and you get your net worth. Um, 
Here are some more about the types of assets that I kind of touched upon uh, briefly. Your liquid assets, those are assets that can be converted into cash. Um, why would you need assets turned uh, turn into cash? We'll get into that um, because things can change and things do change fast uh, in life. And if sometimes you need cash, you need it, you need it in a hurry. Um, another type of asset would be your investments. That's, and the goal with those assets is to make money, to get a return. You put in a dollar, you want to get a dollar ten. You want to get a dollar eight. You want to get a dollar twenty, dollar twenty five. Um, so those are the type of uh, this investment type of assets. Other assets are real property, like we spoke in the first class about. That's immovable property. Like that. That's that's real estate. That's land. That's a house. That's a um, you know a, a, an investment house. Uh, apartment complexes. Those are things that you really can't move. I mean, you can move a mobile home, but you know, like that's, um, but these are generally considered real property is going to be uh, immovable property. Um, and then type of assets are your personal property, which is any type of movable part property. Like we talked about, um, you know, like cars, electronics, jewelry, those go into the personal property category. Now, when you want to determine the value of your property, you're using the fair market value, not the original price, because there's something called depreciation. We'll get into depreciation later. So let's say you, uh, as far as um, insurance companies are concerned, we'll get into that later too, is they want the fair market value. So let's say you buy something for um, $1,000. Let's say you buy a television for you know, $700, and then it is stolen or it is broken and something happens, you have to put in a claim with your uh, insurance company, they're gonna appraise it at the fair market value. You're not gonna get the, you know, the seven or $800 back, unless there's a special clause or a special type of insurance you have or type of a guarantee that you have from, from where you buy it from, bought it from, they'll give you the fair market value. So if you bought something for seven or $800, a couple years later, that thing is worth $500, you'll get $500, not, not the original retail price. So always keep that in mind. Um, here's the balance, balance sheet formula. Your total ass, is total assets is equal to your total liabilities plus your net worth, or your net worth is equal to your total assets minus total liabilities. This is a simple algebraic equation. You can do it this way, or like you take this net worth, you put it on, the, on that, this side of the zero, and you take your total assets on that side of the zero, and you subtract the two. Um, and we'll, I'll give you some examples later um, over the weekend. And so basically net worth is the same as equity. Um, when you have more than you, than, than you owe, when your assets are more than your, your liabilities, it's basically um, what your net, net worth is. If there's one word I want you to know for this class, it's insolvency. That means that you owe more than your worth. Your liabilities outweigh your assets. You're, you're insolvent. So if you hear somebody say, instead of saying I'm broke, it's nice. It's better to say I'm insolvent, you know, or, um, you know, you can't afford lunch today because uh, you, you know, your checking account balance is zero. You don't have any of your savings. Say, hey, I can't get Taco Bell. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm uh, temporarily insolvent. Um, it sounds a lot better than saying you're broke. Um, how do you calculate a balance sheet? And we'll get into that. Uh, I'll show some examples for you uh, after, at, no, after the slide um, in the next couple of days. One, you list all your assets as a fair market value. Then you list all your current and long-term liabilities, and then you calculate your net, net worth. You're not going to have to do this for an exam or anything like that. I'm not, you're not going to have any homework on it, but it's, it's good to know um, how to calculate these things. Um, income statement. That basically shows what you earned and how you spend, how you spent your money over a period, once again, over a period of time. Solvency ratio. This is a good one. I'll give you some examples of, sol of solvency ratios. That's when you take your total net worth and you put that, that's the numerator on top. And then under the denominator below, you put your total assets. That just basically shows how much, of a, how much cushion, how much safety you have to protect against insolvency. With that, you're going to want that positive. Um, the lower the number, the greater the probability that you can't pay that, pay off that debt. Um, we will also get into um, in credit later um your uh capitalization or your your um, utilization rate that's a big one for when you're looking with credit cards the magic number with credit cards and utilization rate is 30 percent meaning you should never or try not to exceed 30 percent of your of your credit card limits so if you have a credit card that has a thousand dollar limit 
try to keep that under 300 bucks. So if you keep that under $300, that looks better for your, um, uh, to the credit agencies. And we'll get into the credit agencies and credit scores and all that kind of stuff um, a little bit later, but this all ties into it. So there's your solvency ratio. You want that um, number uh, high, not low. Liquidity ratio. This is a good one. I'll show you examples of that um, in a further um, uh, video. But your total liquid assets, remember liquid assets, what are those? It's cash, that's check, check, what are you having checking, what are you having savings, what are you having CDs, certificate deposits, not like musical, <laughs> the compact is, um, money market accounts. That over, that's in the numerator, below the denominator is going to be your total current debt. And that just shows your ability to pay off current debt. That also shows um, if everything went to he double hockey sticks how much time would you have uh how much money do you have how long could that could that last you um which is which is important because when everything kind of goes bad you want to make sure that you have some money saved up that's your liquidity ratio savings ratio this is basically cash surplus income after taxes i don't really care about that one debt service ratio this is kind of important when you're when you're uh, going to buy some stuff is your total monthly payments or total monthly loan payments that's on top, the numerator, and below is your monthly gross income. And this basically determines your ability to pay out, pay debts promptly. So that's chapter two. Chapter two is pretty quick. Um, what you can kind of expect next is um, I will put up a quiz, uh, most likely tomorrow, which will be Thursday. Uh, that'll be timed of how long you can take it. And then I'll put up some examples over the weekend of um, balance sheets, how to calculate that, some liquidity ratios, how you can kind of uh, calculate, calculate that kind of stuff. And, um, and then I will put in the assignments, uh, just write me one or two sentences of stuff that you learned this week or stuff that you want to learn more about. And um, normally I ha I'll have some videos to, to accompany this as well. And um, so that's basically that. That's that's a really quick chapter one. Really quick. Our chapter one was longer. Chapter two is pretty quick. Uh, this class ideally is for this lesson here is more of a hands-on um, lesson, and I will get that stuff to you um, later later in in this week. So, any questions? Feel free to contact me at uh, jducer at citruscollege.edu or at ducer d u s s e r r e at chapman.edu. And uh, I've been in, in contact with some of you by email, by phone. Keep the calls, keep the emails coming. I know there's some challenges here technologically. Um, I'll be better next week, but um, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm very disappointed my Rams lost over the weekend. It's just the only few times I've ever, ever watched one of their games I wanted it to be over. So, um, and I went one-on-one -on -one in fantasy football. So I know everybody's dying for that information. So um, I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Scram.